Secure Shell, SSH, is a cryptographic network protocol that enables secure communication between computer systems and supports various authentication mechanisms, including password-based and SSH key-based methods. SSH keys, which consist of one private key and one public key, eliminate the need for passwords by providing secure authentication, making them ideal for script-based processes and automation tasks. First, we'll demonstrate how to set up SSH key-based authentication between similar and dissimilar operating systems. Later in the video, we'll cover installing OpenSSH Server, SSHD, on various operating systems. We use a tool called SSH KeyGen to generate authenticating SSH key pairs using any of the encryption algorithms below. RSA, DSA, ECDSA, ED25519. Assume two systems, one remote and one local. On the local system, while logged in as the user, type SSH KeyGen dash T RSA dash B 4096. This will generate an SSH key pair using the RSA algorithm with a four kilobit key size. If we want to use the newest algorithm, we just type SSH dash key gen. Hit enter to accept the default path and file name or enter a custom one. For the passphrase, in this example, we'll leave it empty by hitting enter twice. By default, the path and file name is tilde slash dot ssh slash id underscore algorithm for Linux and dollar env user profile backslash dot ssh backslash id underscore algorithm for Windows. Under the dot ssh folder, under the user's home directory or Windows profile, there will be two files the private key and the public key. For the key pair to work, the private key must be readable and accessible only by the user. Use these commands to get the file permissions. Linux, Windows PowerShell, Windows Command Prompt. After creating the key pair, we need to copy the public key to a file named authorized underscore keys in the users.ssh directory on the remote system. This will allow SSH and SCP commands to work without typing a password. For Linux to Linux, this is easily accomplished using the ssh-copy-id command. The command copies the user's SSH public key to the dot ssh forward slash authorized underscore keys file on the remote target system. Once that's completed, SSH and SCP commands to the remote system can be performed without using a password. Unfortunately, but not unexpectedly, using the ssh dash copy dash id command to copy the public key from Linux to Windows will not work you will get an exe is not recognized as an internal or external command error, and on the Windows remote system, you'll see a weird file under the user's profile. You can safely delete this file. For Linux to Windows, you must manually copy the public key using the SCP command. The quotes in closing the path are important for the file to copy properly. Then, on a remote Windows computer, under user profile, if not already there, create a .ssh directory. Copy the contents of the copy public certificate into the .ssh backslash authorized underscore keys file. It's very important that you append the authorized underscore keys file and not overwrite it if you have multiple hosts. Once completed, SSH and SCP commands from Linux to the remote Windows system can be performed without a password. You can use SSH to connect Windows 
to another Windows terminal session without requiring a password. The process is similar to that used for Linux to Windows. Manually copy the public key using the SCP command. Copy in using UNC pathing and other methods work also. Append the contents of the copied public certificate into the .ssh backslash authorized underscore keys file. It should now be possible to SSH from one Windows system into another without using a password. However, the preferred method for remote terminal access without requiring a password is to configure Windows Remote Management and WinRM trusted hosts. Open an administrative PowerShell session on both a local and remote Windows systems. Enable Windows Remote Management. Add systems and or domains to trusted hosts. Remote in using enter-ps session. Another method of connecting to a remote system via SSH without a password is to use the dash i identity file option. When using SSH dash i, we specify the remote system's private key. In this case, the user's public key on the remote system is copied to the user's .ssh forward slash authorized underscore keys file on that system. The user's private key from the remote system is copied to the user's profile on the local system from where they initiate the SSH session. The private key can be in the .ssh or another folder, but it must be readable and accessible only by the user. From any Linux, Unix, or Mac OS local system with the private key, you can use ssh-i without a password. Likewise, the syntax is the same from any Windows local system using the remote system's private key. This is how Azure uses SSH keys. It provides the private key to the user connecting to the hosted remote Linux system. To enable SSH communications between systems, we need to have OpenSSH Server, SSHD, installed. In Server Manager, Local Server, enable Remote SSH Access. Hit Enter to accept the default Yes. Click the Refresh button to reflect the updated status. In Server Manager, under the Tools menu, select Services. The Open SSH Server service will show a status as running with a startup type set to automatic. Server Manager, Tools, Window Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Under Inbound Rules, under Open SSH Server, Advanced tab, you may need to check your appropriate network profile. Server Manager, Tools, Computer Management, Expand local users and groups. Groups. Windows Server 2025 and Windows 11 have an open SSH user group that defines which users are allowed to connect via SSH. Server administrators are allowed by default. The SSHD underscore config file is located in the C colon backslash program data backslash SSH folder, and the SSH executables are located in the C colon backslash Windows backslash System32 backslash Open SSH folder. Right click Start, Settings, Apps. Click Optional Features, Add a Feature, and type Open SSH. Select the checkbox and click Install. Once the installation is completed, in Server Manager, under the Tools menu, select Services. Open the Open SSH Server service and set the startup type to Automatic and start the service. Server Manager, Tools, Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Under Inbound Rules, Open SSH Server, Advanced tab, you may need to verify your appropriate network profile. Server Manager, 
tools, computer management, expand local users and groups, groups, Windows Server 2022, 2019, 2016, and Windows 10 do not have an open SSH users group. Right click and select new group. For the name, type open SSH users, provide an optional description, and add group members. Open Notepad with elevated or administrative rights. Edit the shd underscore config file and add the allow group line. The group names defined in the sshd underscore config file must be listed in lowercase. This mimics the behavior of Windows Server 2025. Right click Start, Settings, System, Optional Features. Click View Features and type Open SSH. Select a checkbox, click Next, followed by Add. When installed, the status will read Added. In Ubuntu Desktop Linux 24.04 and earlier, the OpenSSH server may not be installed by default. In a terminal, check the SSH status. If nothing appears, double check the installation status by using the APT Package Manager. If OpenSSH-Server is not installed, install using the APT Package Manager. Once installed, check the status again. Ubuntu Server Linux, however, typically will have the OpenSSH server installed by default. SUSE and OpenSUSE Linux will automatically install the OpenSSH server, but it may be in a deactivated state. In a terminal, check the status. If the service is showing as disabled, enable and start. Check the service status again. Check the local firewall to ensure that SSH traffic over TCP port 22 is allowed. Open YAS. Yes. Navigate to Security and Users, Firewall. Check Zones. Open the zone that is active as denoted by an X mark. If SSH is not listed in the Allowed column, add it and save the configuration. Red Hat Linux, and by extension, downstream clones such as Rocky Linux, will typically already have the OpenSSH server installed and running. Check the status in a terminal, but typically no action is necessary. To prevent unexpected behavior with users who are Windows Server administrators, use Notepad running with elevated or administrator rights to edit the SSHD underscore config file and comment out the section Match Group Administrators. This will keep the behaviors consistent between the various operating systems. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.